Hi, I'm Rebecca Olds. Welcome back to my studio here at Time Smith Dress History. This video is part two in a three-part series where I am showing you the hows and whys, the actual process and decision-making and skills in drafting a pattern for a pair of stays, uh, typical for the 1760s. They are fully boned uh, and strapless, and this style was uh, documented and patterned in Patterns of Fashion 5, uh, published a few years ago by the School of Historical Dress. I learned the ARC method for drafting stays patterns from Luca Costigliolo, uh, through a workshop at the School of Historical Dress in 2019. I've had a lot more practice in this method and I really hope that these videos will show you my process and explain uh, how I do this and why and that will help you in your own projects. So let's get right back into um, this day's drafting. Uh, we left part one on a little bit of a cliffhanger so let's see how this uh, progresses now. So at this point, we've got basically the basic sort of framework of the body, starting with the midline under the arm, a front, center front, center back. We've got established kind of the the uh, the width of the chest uh, up to um, sort of the arm's eye with where the point is going to be, and then sketched in likewise um, a preliminary uh, kind of grid line for. Um, the top of the back, uh, which I've just taken a few moments to double check um, that it's not too wide and does in fact uh, reflect uh, both uh, Sarah's measurements and um, go some way to addressing the too wide gap that she has in her current stays. But this should sit very comfortably um, on her uh, on her upper back. So with those sort of frameworks, we also have um, the first three arcs, starting with the bust arc, a waist arc, and uh, what uh, Luca and the Patterns of Fashion 5 team refer to as high hip. This is actually the line that you could trace connecting the tops of the skirts uh, as they flare out over the hip and a dip uh, lower towards the front peak and the back peak, but a bit lower in the front for this style of stays. So the next thing we need to do actually is just the fourth curve. And this one is very specific to the style of the stays. Uh, there's no reference to body measurements. As you can see, it is sketched out here and it just marks how long the stays are going to be, uh, sorry, the skirts are going to be as they uh, come off the body of the stays uh, from that high hip line. Uh, these will flare a little bit, the ones that are showing, showing overlapping uh, in a flat pattern, um, in a, in a three-dimensional uh, shape as a structure, uh, those uh, flare out a bit and they don't quite touch, but these are a bit longer and need to basically determine the curve around to the back. So that's what I will attempt now. And it is pretty much uh, a freeform uh, drawing. I've just checked some kind of measurements to kind of against this in terms of general proportions. Uh, I've checked how long these are going to sit. Uh, relative to the waist and the tops of the skirts. And I think uh, the sort of shortest point there is going to be something like this, uh, curving to, it could actually be it's a little higher. Uh, I think um, the one uh, compromise we have here is Sarah's desire to not have a super long peak. Um, this style is significantly longer than the uh, fourth quarter of the century style of stays that she has been wearing. So this will feel uh, a bit different to her. And if I was sticking strictly to the pattern proportions, this peak would in fact be longer. And this line of the skirts would then come in and kind of intersect. You can see they're not as long as that peak. So we've got a little bit of a compromise here. But again, as I've said, uh, that is really uh, body specific and uh, wearer preference. The, the lady who wore the uh, stays that survived from which this pattern was taken may have been long torsoed and, and perhaps really uh, was happy with a very long peak. We just don't know. But to suit Sarah, as always, uh, when you are uh, doing a commission for someone else, 
the customer's needs that come first, even if that means some adjusting to the reference points that you are using um, to inform your drafting. So what I'm seeing there is this curve looks much steeper. This is not too different from the uh, actual waistline arc, but it does come up a little bit more. So that's what I have just kind of uh, determined here. However, with that relatively short peak, that um, may not create the end result that ideally I would want. So I think what here, I need to employ, employ some of my initiative in deciding the length of these skirts. And I think that is a little bit of a matter of um, proportion, the overall proportions. I'm looking at this and trying to, again, as I've mentioned, um, sort of picture, picture Sarah in my mind's eye and um, try to visualize this as a three-dimensional, um, more of a sculptured, you know, uh, garment around her um, and looking at how that's going to fall then and where those skirts are going to be. And as I do that, in this case, I think these skirts might, and again, I'm always referencing the pattern as well, and I wonder if the skirts might not be a bit better if they are a bit shorter. And in fact, I'm rethinking that high hip. Um, looking at that, I wonder if it shouldn't be a bit more like that, possibly. That's a pretty hard dark line, but if that falls away a bit steeply, that is a little bit gentler, but I think that does need to be flat again. And just go straight off in that direction. Okay. That just helps me visualize these skirts. Because these need to, this is going to be where they re basically release the tension any compression that's happening higher on the body, these skirts are going to kind of flop out there. So I'm going to do that. I think that feels a little more realistic. Also makes me just look at the waist and bust. I think that looks about right. That's, yeah, okay. And that's, it looks a little flat, but I think adding a bit of curve in, yeah, possibly. Not curve, just, just, I just want to make sure that, that the gradient or, yeah, the degree of curve is gradual in its change um, and without any flat spots in it. So I think that seems about right. Right, that feels better. But now it looks a little more curved than that. I'm going to amend this slightly, just sort of a median in between where I had it first, then what I just changed it to. I'm going to go back and sketch something in that's kind of in the middle of that. Happy medium. Maybe third time's a charm. Yeah, that seems a little better. I'll just 
reinforce that. I'm finding that a little touch confusing. My marks end there. Okay. So now for the length, the actual length of the skirts. That one's going to come down and it's going to pop out and flare a little bit. That's going to be a little bit on the shorter. I think, I think for my line, given that these ones right in the middle don't come down to the line, I think that's probably about right. And it's going to, it's going to come across. It's that short peak. Don't want to compromise the style too much. Because that line is about where I want these skirts to come out to, and I want the peak a little bit longer. I think I'm going to, and perhaps this is sort of a bit prescriptive. Okay, that's a little too round, if that makes sense. Needs to be just a little bit more. More like a mountain. Okay, that's a bit prescriptive. As in, I'm I'm making decisions. Uh, so we might call that drafter's bias. As in. I'm drafting to a certain degree. This is, I think, this is true of every single pattern drafter. You, 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 you draft to your strengths. You draft to you're influenced by what you like, what you think looks good, what you would kind of recommend. And I think that actually matches the proportions of the original pattern really well. And that back peak comes into exactly where it should. Um, in fact, that's sort of the point up here. I'm looking at that and wondering if it could just be a touch more like that. These are not completely derived or dependent on the wearer's body. These are Sort of refinements according to the style of the stays. So I'm checking that pattern all the time. So what I want to do is I'll have I'll have just a little bit of flare added here, just a touch. to do this. Okay. So that is fine there. That's going to come across over here. And for the sake of the pattern, I'm going to go ahead and ha add in about half an inch, just a touch. We'll know in the mock-up whether this is a viable, a viable thing. Alright, just taking a moment to label all of these arcs and lines. Don't know whether to call it creative license or academic license, but basically we are looking at four arcs <laughs> that um, do the job, um, reflect the pattern, in the overall proportions um, and lengths of the uh, skirts as they go on, um, but also with reference to um, Sarah's overall um, uh, size, shape, proportion, and uh, measurements taken um, from her body. So let's see how this goes now that we begin to sketch in things that are specific to the pattern, specific to the style. So that will be things like the number 
of pattern pieces or panels, uh, as you can see here in Patterns of Fashion 5. Uh, the basic shapes of four of them, and those gradually get refined and completed uh, with the shaping. Uh, the darts that are specific to this pattern uh, that are not done by reference to uh, any particular wearer, uh, they do need to create the shape of this style, and that is where that is done. Um, I will take a moment here and decide from this description um, and from my notes exactly the order of things I need to do. I need to be sure that I am apportioning the, the, the overall whole, which is half the body, that I'm giving the correct proportion to panels one, two, three, and four um, before I then begin to complete um, and, and work in the, the overall, the, the curves of the shapes and draw in the skirts and such like. So that's where we're at now. We have got everything uh, that's on the second drawing, plus we've got the top line, the arm's eye, and a bit of a suggestion on what's going to be happening um, up at the upper back. Um, so we can get started here. So I think the next thing that I will do is that apportioning. Um, and what we've got here is the front panel comes through and the top of that first seam, it's sometimes useful to label the seams, to have a name to refer to that seam. This first one uh, in my workshop notes is, is labeled A. Uh, so the top of that seam sits a little bit back from the that midline. Um, I may not have that as far back as my, what might actually be useful. So I'm going to go something a bit like that. When it comes down, it needs to come all the way down to the high hip um, la arc line. Um, that is where that front piece uh, and then the next uh, panel piece, um, this, is, this is where they're going to be stitched down to and then it will be free. The peak will be on this side and the first skirt of that second panel pe pattern piece will be here. So this is really um, looking at the, the direction, the end point for drawing this seam. This is all a matter of proportion. So if I want to sort of break this up and look at the center front line and that midline, you can see that that is approximately a third of the way along. Um, we'll go with that to get started. So if I take something like this, and let's see, I am intersecting, yes, it's this line. So I'm going to just walk this along a little bit to take a measure, take its measure, that line. And I'll just crease that there. And then I'm going to fold that in thirds and see what I have there. So just to edge that a little bit. There, not quite. Okay, so we've got a, a portioned thirds on this. And because I've got some other creases, uh, sort of inadvertent ones, I'm just gonna make a mark there so I don't lose that. So from that end, walking it around to this crease, this is, this is the end point we're going for here. And I think while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do these apportionments of the other of the skirts. Just make little little dots so that I can see that from this line to here, I'm going to need to divide that up into thirds as well. So we'll do that quite quickly. Run those like that. So from this point up here, we're going to go with 
the one that's slightly further back. I need a straight edge. This is a reference point. This is not the end seam, a lot, seam line. This is a framing tool, a bit like using a grid. Right, so it's going to run like this to, through that point there. So that's this line here. I think it's actually probably a bit simpler to now take this next one from the back. The top here, this will be seam, the seam that's labeled C. So we're starting, it's, it's halfway along of that half back measure. So it's there and it's almost exactly uh, parallel to the center back. It's not exactly, it flares slightly. And you can see that when you look at the garment, um, that you can see uh, the center back and then the point on the other side of that panel where it seems on to the adjacent panel. But that's a touch, a very slight touch um, wider than at the very top. There is a certain optical illusion here when you're looking at this because it's of the boning pattern, because the bones that are in there that go all the way from top to bottom create an empty space that is that widens out. But don't forget that this, this seam is not dead straight and there are some partial uh, length bones in there as well. So it's a little bit of an illusion, um, but that is a little bit wider. Um, and as we'll see, uh, as I've already sketched in, but I'll deal with that in full in a moment, um, the, the back peak right where below the points where the lacing stops, um, it does flare outward. It is not a straight, straight line. And neither is this once we get the dart drafted in. So on that basis, we're looking at, let's see, this is half CB. AB, I mean, right. There's half of AB. I'm going to measure down a little bit. Let's see, to this point, I'm going to move that over a little teeny bit. Here, I want that a teeny bit yet, a bit more here. And here we'll go. So let's see what we get here. This is not a precise line. It just needs at this point to be a straight line. And it is a little bit closer to the center back than it is to the midline. So it's maybe about 40%, something like that, a 60, 40 split. Yeah, that's just a rough approximation. The actual B seems that's a little bit deceptive because what we're actually dealing with here is a rounded, a rounded edge to this piece. And then the B actually takes off down here. Um, that's really a matter of proportion as well. I'm not going to take an exact measurement. Um, But that measure, uh, this, this line here, which I've not got on here, is has got a description. It is a center back to back of the arm's eye. I think I, I misinterpreted something in my notes. I think, actually, AC needs to be sitting down lower as a measurement of the body. AC. Oh, 
A, B. Why am I saying A, C? A, B actually needs to be more like this. Uh, let's make sure that's absolutely square. I could probably usefully invest in a square. I haven't done that. Right. So that tells me that I have actually got too tight of an arm's eye here. Right, I'm going to go to the other side of the table so I can use my a draw a curve using this motion of my arm rather than trying to do this. So what I've got here is a bit more of a shallow something like that. Yeah, that looks appropriate. Okay, so that means my apportioning here is a bit off, which is fine. Easily redone. We haven't we haven't mapped anything out that's dependent on that line yet, so that's a good time to do that sense check and be absolutely sure. Right, so this is gonna be rounded off a little bit and we will retake this. something more like this. So we're going to redo C and that is still going to be, okay, that is slightly more noticeably flared which is fine. I was a little concerned that it still looked a little too parallel to the eye. I think that will make more sense. Okay. So that's now, so you've got A and C, B is basically that line for B, it's got the little dog leg right there at the top, we'll deal with that in a second, but the essential line of the piece needs to be, go from there down to intersecting here at the high hip. Okay, that's a fairly flared piece and that's okay because that's the so-called Eiffel Tower piece. Now that seems more flared than I expected because normally this the, the angles of these pieces would be have a little bit more relationship which makes me wonder if perhaps I think that will work. I have to think about the, the, the ramifications of choosing that line. I'm going for that end point from that start point, a straight line. And I'm looking at that to that. There's going to be some curvature built in. And the curvature actually does mean taking quite a lot of uh, uh, the dart being very gathered through there, which makes sense because that is kind of the the, the curvature of the back, where if someone is what we call sway backed, that is what pulls the garment in close to the body. Right, there's a bit more flair than I expect expected, which leads me back to that line. Yeah, I think this is too gradual, shooting off that way. I think it needs to kind of cup a little bit more 
like here so that you've got I'm going to split the difference I'm going to add half an inch there that will mean moving C again that's fine I think that's what we need to do but we're going to go and just redraw that curve a little bit so that point is fixed that's a measurement so in moving the end point up to here this alters the kind of the pitch of that curve there so what I want is something that goes through that line and is going to then curve a little bit deeper just a bit more of a scoop a deeper scoop and then around like that let's see how that looks I think what we'll do is sort of take that by halves so I had the line one way I reshaped it and it created a little bit of a bulge so now I am taking that kind of a splitting the difference to a more of a what I hope is a happy medium that will reflect the lines of the pattern but go through the go through the points that are determined by the measurements taken look at that upside down but arm size are not an even circle or half circle anyway and that's what a mock-up is for is to see whether on the body when you start dealing with little fleshy bits that can't predict exactly how they're going to behave that's when you find out whether things kind of poke or meet a little resistance or squeeze or gape um, those things that sheer measurements alone don't tell you that's why you always make a mock-up okay so this will be line C drawn for the third time and it sometimes feels like three is the magic number you do it one way then you do it slightly differently and then you end up splitting the difference not unusual I'm going to just re-sketch that line in now this in terms of the mock-up and how Sarah actually finds this hitting on her body this can be raised or lowered um, if anything for this style of, I think this pretty much matches for her proportions this style of stays but we will see um, the key thing is that measurement between the center back and the actual, you know, where that's going to hit her um, in the, behind the arm. We don't want it um, impeding her mo her movement. And I'm actually looking at that and see that the curve has has actually added a little bit to the garment edge, which we don't quite want. And that might fixing that might deal with the slight bulge that I was seeing. So we need to actually go through that line I think that looks okay it looks like an arm's eye right and I'm yeah I'm splitting this line in half not this not this one so that one and new C. I think for the sake of C I'm going to go ahead and draw this one first and see where that falls through. Once again battery uh, the auto link kind of stop on recording files um, had 
<laughs> the time it expired and um, camera switched off. Um, so what I've been doing is studying out the proportions here of the Eiffel, Ta Eiffel Tower piece and doing a little bit of um, experimenting with the placement of the lines for um, the seams, those two seams. Uh, that's got the little dog leg in it, um, which means that when these are constructed, this portion here will have no boning in it whatsoever. And that does create an ability to kind of tuck in a dart to shape the back, to pull the back, uh, the upper part of the back of the stays um, a little closer to the body to create curvature around the body there. But I've now got that line to, to divide. We've now got three lines to divide the whole uh, pattern into four pieces. Uh, proportionately. Um, I've done a bit more double checking and, um, or third checking in some cases. Um, my initial impression here is that creating a skirt, um, this seems a little bit uh, kind of short and squat like it's a kind of floppy. So it's possible that this either needs to come down a little bit or perhaps the high hip line raised a little bit. But those are things we'll see in the mock-up. Um, when they're actually on Sarah's body. Um, because again, the, the arcs are drawn according to the stay maker, the draft, the, the pattern drafter, their um, understanding. Um, but these are freehand, they're free form. There's not a mathematical formula that can place uh, ex that arc and draw it exactly based on any kind of measurements or known uh, mathematical figures. Um, this is... Um, uh, a draftsman's art um, and I am I think these are these are pretty it's going to vary by stay maker to stay maker in terms of how um, uh, accurate if you like but I think at the end of the day the proof is in the pudding as they say it isn't until a mock-ups made that you can determine whether those arcs um, work or not because uh, it's not just measurements it's kind of the kind of uh, structure of the body and the um, squishiness, I guess. Um, uh, everyone is different. So that's where we're at with that. Now, now the next, the next thing I'm going to do before I've got, I've got the skirts kind of roughly a portion for the second piece, uh, panel piece, um, a pattern piece, I should say. And that's got quite a distinctive shape because it's, it's on a slant, it's kind of at an angle, and um, looking at the pattern piece as it's actually taken for this pair of stays, it's this piece. So it is. it has got quite a cant. Now it's, it's situated on the page this way to show the grain line uh, and kind of the boning directions, but when you slide that in next to the, um, the front piece, you can see it's really quite a strong angle. Then it sits much higher, much further along up the arm's eye, the back of the arm, uh, than this point does. And similarly, the shape of the bottom here. It really needs to flare. The the lines at the the the, the high hip line that show the, where the tops of the skirts are really take quite an angle there. Um, so that that whole kind of canting, if you like. Uh, uh, and this, when you put, place it like this, it looks like it's off grain, but remember when cutting, when cutting the pattern pieces and the fabric, this drawing ref gives you um, uh, the, the, the grain and lets you see that the boning channels are not exactly on grain as this one is, definitely on grain, that's definitely on grain, and this, most of the bones are on grain. Um, this one is slightly a, a unique piece. Uh, these two pieces, um, <sighs> can vary a lot and can get kind of funky. Um, and mock-ups really determine, sort of really, really show you how, how uh, unusual these two pieces may need to be. Um, but when you think about the, the shape of the body and that area of the body, you know, it's very uh, three-dimensional. It's, um, and very unique. Everyone is very uh, individual. I'm repeating myself here, it's difficult to say, but that is that that really needs to be tailored just so uh, in the ordinary English sense of the word, not tailoring as a trade so much, but really needs to be that really needs to be bespoke. Um, that you can't just look at those pieces and say, right, those pieces need to be fixed. I'd say there's more that needs to be sort of fixed 
arbitrary on the front piece and to perhaps a lesser degree on the back piece. Um, but these two get very, very individual. Once we've got these, uh, the apportionment um, division of the, of the pattern into four pieces uh, according to the proportions and measurements, then I need to build in the shaping of this style of stays. What I need for doing this is not shown anywhere on this page. You can't see the shaping of the darts and anything uh, about these pieces or even when they're connected here where you can see where they join at the top and where they join at the bottom. You can see there's quite a curvy dart in here. But the only clue in Patterns of Fashion 5, to give you a clue what these are, all lies in this drawing with the straight line through the middle. Um, and what that gives you is a frame of reference as to the shape of the edge of the um, pattern piece on each side of that line. So this is not a seam line. The shaping, the curved things will be will be what needs to be joined to each other. So in this case, that curved line to that curved line will be stitched together, curve to curve, and the curves are not symmetrical. In this case, the leading edge, that front edge of pattern piece two here, remains straight. And curve is drawn into this edge of the first piece. And that is a fairly conservative curve, but depending on the body and whether there's a sort of a hollowing out underneath the bust or along the rib cage, that can be much more dramatic than that. But we do know that that straight edge there is going to be the edge of this second piece. So I can firm that up and make it a much darker line. That is a pattern piece line. Okay, so what's happening here is the relative shaping of this. What we did in the workshop was to find the widest point, the biggest distance between the curved line and the straight line, whether it's this straight line or this straight line or this straight. Determine where that is and then that gives you um, uh, some kind of uh, points to start plotting your curve in. Now, this drawing in Patterns of Fashion 5 does not include that, but the workshop did. Now that's from the workshop, so I am not gonna be showing that on screen. Okay, more freehand drawing. But I find personally that some of this, you can kind of use a ruler not to draw the line, the ruler will move under my hand, but to steady my pencil, to somewhat control the degree of the curve. Okay, so this is what a straight line would look like between roughly these points, but I don't want a straight line. I want a little bit of shape to this. So, right, I am drawing from down here. It's got to be from here, running through that, running to there, and it's actually just about here. Okay.
There's one here. Just sketch that in. Okay, now what I know is approximately the placements of where is the, the widest point of these darts uh, relative to the straight line. So this one, the, the kind of, if there's a bulge, if you like, furthest away from that straight line, it needs to be uh, down this way, and whereas the corresponding one on the other piece is more this way. So I'm now just basically looking, eyeballing that to see if that portion between my fingers looks of a similar shape. And it is, you can see this doesn't really start to diverge from, from that center straight line until about there. I'm kind of messing it up now. So it's pretty even. And the line at this, the curvature at this point is so, so slight that you can just actually use a straight edge to kind of feather very lightly so that's I've drawn that very lightly this one looks pretty good it kind of sometimes sometimes you can find that the actual bulge is not quite in the right place so I want to make sure that it's clear that this is the outside and that this is coming towards it this way both ways that's not bad I have struggled with that one in the past and got really, really fussy, and I've had Luca redraw this for me on the very first time that I did this in a workshop. I don't think that's too bad. I'm just gonna go back and double check this one, that it's not too extreme. Kinda looks like it might be a little bulgy, when maybe it should be just a touch more streamlined. Yeah, possibly. The last one, this one, this one I actually quite enjoy because it's pretty, very, just a sliver taken out of this side of the seam and it's fairly, not quite symmetrical. Right, this is my end point here. Don't get confused and, and be ending your dart on this higher line. That's waistline. You need it to come to the high hip. This is, this, these darts come in right at the top of the skirts because that is the point where 
the pieces are joined, they are joined by stitching, and then they're separate. So it's got to be the high hip line. Okay, on this one, the darts do start from the very top. Okay, I think that sort of apex needs to be a little higher up on the body. Reposition that. You can see I'm not using the ruler to draw a straight line. I'm merely using it really to rest, to kind of stabilize my pencil as it moves across here. So kind of using it to direct my curve a little bit. Right, actually do need that to come. Because I've got several faint lines here, I've decided it might be better if I just do this freehand to where I think I want that line. That probably needs a bit of evening up, which I can use the ruler to just smooth that portion slightly. Okay, this basically means a little feathering with with now a little judicious clean up on the underside. All right, let's not lose my grid marks, grid lines. Or my arcs. Okay. So now I'm looking at this and I'm looking at that Eiffel Tower piece and I'm seeing really seeing the differences in the shapes on each side. Um, this I've got a little, a little bit of a funny slight bulge to the line. I think I can possibly smooth up. That's okay because this does start here and this here. But that is the Eiffel Tower piece that's going to have three skirts on it. Right, I'm having a quick look now, getting a little more precise, a little bit more honed in, zeroed in on the shape of this dart. And at this point, that looks like a pretty large dart. It should be similar in size to this one, smaller than this one. So I think perhaps I've got just a bit carried away here and this one could be more like this. 
which then affects the shape of the peak as it continues down this way. Does that peak now look like a more even flow to here? That peak is not going to be vastly long. We can see now what I've done here. It's basically this creates, continues on. This is the curve and it's possible that this could curve even more. But I want to remember that that is, that is at that point. Right. So for skirts, what we've got is the tip of that one. It's got quite a shape. It really is a sort of a continuation of this line with a slight curve. Just a with much more curvature on this, this side. So I'm going to again sort of use my ruler as a means to support my pencil. This one I always think of as a finger. It really is like an index finger kind of pointing the way. It's comparatively narrow because of that kind of pointy effect. And when I say pointy, I don't mean straight. I mean, I mean like a finger. It's right. The next one rests right on this. So that is actually the tip of it. And you can see the angles jut out a little bit differently. But this one is almost the same width, top to bottom. So that actually, I can sort of map out. If I go here, ah, I forgot that it's a little bit at an angle. So if I go here, here, And that third one is a little bit shorter, so it's going to come in more like this. We're also looking at the gaps in between, so the, these guys. It's not a continuation of that line the way I drew it. It's okay, and it's a little bit wider at the tip than it is here. So I'm just gonna use that usefully. These, in many ways, are easier.
Okay. On this, on the Eiffel Tower piece, that middle skirt finger is pretty much on a straight parallel plane with the piece itself. So I can kind of center it that as a ruler, seeing how that's coming down. Now, when I actually look at the thirds, it doesn't quite measure up, but that's okay. That comes down to body, so we can do that. And that, yeah, it's pretty close. So the fingers themselves are very rectangular, very rectangular here, um, kind of even width across the top. It tapers very, very slightly. So I'm just going to cant my ruler very slightly, pencil in these lines. They're going to be a very slight taper, and those come very nearly to this uh, arc line. Okay, again as a matter of proportion, these skirts feel short. Um, my suspicion is here that some of this is due to a longer torso on the wearer of the stays from which this pattern was taken. So this will come down to Sarah when she makes her mock-up, what she thinks. It's very easy to change a shape of skirts at mock-up um, stage. Right, now these three skirts do splay quite a lot. So this one here, that front edge from that dart is almost a continuation of this curve, which looks a little too pronounced. I think it needs to come in a bit like this and then it can kind of flare out. And you can see that that overlaps on this single drawing, overlaps nearly into the, the middle of um, the adjacent skirt, which is wider. So I'm going to now kind of vaguely square this off. It's a fairly short skirt, really, um, but it needs to come back to here and it needs to be something like that. Right. It's going to come like this and it's not absolutely square at the tip. So it's something like this. That looks quite a lot longer. So I think we've come too far down. Yeah, something more like that. I always end up with some of them always having the appearance of being wider and it's because the measurement's taken on this curve which is not squared up across the tab so it's a little a bit of an optical illusion. Right, on this side we also have the same situation where this dart line curves into but then it has a, it straightens up a little bit so we will go ahead and make that in a little darker. I think it's probably about right, but then we're going to straighten up slightly. So we're not following that line exactly. We are curving back in. Not an insignificant amount, something like that. The skirt itself is kind of follows on a continuum here an equal amount of splay. Okay. 
and I think that needs to be just a touch more this way. Yeah, so that's going to kind of round off. It's slightly rounded, not as square to some. Okay, that's like that. Now this, for the peak portion, that was the original kind of grid line, but we need to sort of continue this piece down here. It's a little bit longer. Yeah, and then we're gonna round it off. Okay, I believe we have all the features. We have a top line, we have all the seam lines, we have all the arcs, we have all the skirts, we've got the darts. Haven't forgotten anything, left them off. Need to get rid of some extra lines that might confuse me. Okay, I'm going to pause here, take some photographs, and a short video reviewing this and then talk about how to transfer this master drawing onto individual pattern pieces uh, like you would expect to see in a pattern with the grain line indicated and um, in this case uh, we'll also be giving an indication of suggested boning channels uh, directions and placement um, which also means sort of calculating um, the ideal width of boning um, to fully fill those channels um, so that they go in very, very snugly, uh, so that the result is that the entire garment is fully boned with no empty, unboned, just kind of soft, quilty bits. Um, the, they do need to be completely um, boned. So we'll get move on to that um, in just a moment. So the pattern is now done, and here is the master pattern showing all of the parts uh, all in one drawing and in part three of this video series I'll show you how I use this to create a usable pattern with all of the pieces separate and ready to lay out and cut out the fabrics for building the stays. So that's in part three. We'll see you over there shortly.